What's up everybody? Welcome back. In this video, we're going to discuss one of the most well-known and widely celebrated cases in Supreme Court history, Brown v. Board of Education. So let's get right to it. Alright, so let's jump right in. Now, we know that as a result of Plessy v. Ferguson, that it gave birth to decades of Jim Crow laws. And among these racially segregated policies included so-called separate but equal public schools. Now, we know that the schools are definitely separate, having schools for white children and black children. We also know just as well as they were separate, they were certainly not equal. The facts of this specific case are rather straightforward. Brown versus Board is actually combining several lawsuits that took place from multiple states at the same time. Black students all over the country were being denied admittance to certain public schools as a result of their race. The case is named for Oliver Brown. He had a daughter in third grade named Linda Carroll Brown, and she was forced to go to a school further than the one closest to her house. You see, she lived just a few blocks from the white school, and she was therefore not allowed to go there. Instead, she had to be bused further away to the black school. So with the assistance of the NAACP, her family sued, and eventually this case reached the Supreme Court. In this landmark ruling, a unanimous Supreme Court held that racial segregation of public schools is strictly unconstitutional. Notice this excerpt from the majority opinion. This is written by Chief Justice Earl Warren. And you can see the emphasis here saying that we conclude that in the field of public education, the doctrine of separate but equal has no place. Separate educational facilities are inherently unequal. The court here held that separate but equal segregation in the area of public schools is inherently unequal, therefore it is unconstitutional. It's in direct contrast to the 14th Amendment's Equal Protection Clause, which is there to guarantee all persons the equal protection of the law. So the Supreme Court ordered the desegregation of public schools. Unfortunately, one of the legacies of Brown versus Board is that it shows the weakness of the court as policymaker. States all over the South refused to desegregate their public schools. Governors literally stood in the doorway to prevent the desegregation of public schools and essentially just defied the Supreme Court's order found in Brown v. Board. Five years after this ruling, almost no schools had been successfully desegregated yet. It really wasn't until other parts of the federal government started working to make the states and local governments follow Brown v. Board that it began to actually happen. And at that point, the Supreme Court was able to empower lower courts, district courts, to start ruling on plans for uh, desegregation and integration of these schools. And that's when you saw the desegregation occur a little bit more rapidly, at least compared to how it was initially following the ruling. All right, so that's it for this one. Until next time, this has been a La Money Production. Thanks again for watching this video. Make sure you hit that like button for me and subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you in the next video.